David Macros, 2nd of April, Hales Owen. Father, I pray that you'd fill me with your spirit. I, I pray that you'd give me utterance. I pray, Lord, that you'd have mercy upon me. I pray you'd strengthen and help me to preach your gospel, to preach up the Lord Jesus Christ, to preach his name, to lift him up before sinners and to declare that he is the salvation of God. I pray, Father, that you'd have mercy upon the people of Hales Owen and that conviction of sin would fall upon them and that they would seek the salvation which comes from God alone. Father, I pray that you'd give me wisdom and help me, Lord, and have mercy upon me now as I commend myself to you in Jesus' precious name, asking forgiveness and washing away of my sins in Jesus' blood. Amen. Well, good afternoon. It's good to be here to preach the gospel concerning the Lord Jesus Christ, to say that he is the saviour of the world and that there is no other name under heaven given amongst men whereby we must be saved. (coughs) Jesus Christ alone can save you from your sins. The Lord Jesus is the only one who can deliver you, the only one who can take away your sin and give you the salvation which comes from Almighty God. If a person comes to know Jesus Christ, their sins are forgiven. They have everlasting life. Cast yourself on the Lord Jesus Christ, and God will have mercy upon you, and he will save you from your sin. Now, we live in perilous times. The law that was passed in Scotland yesterday, or rather came into effect in Scotland yesterday, concerning hate speech affects us all here in England as well. Whereby even things that are said in private and in the privacy of your own home become criminalised. These are perilous times. These are dangerous times when everybody becomes an informer and no one is safe. These things are really genuinely going on here in Great Britain. Who would have thought that this country, that this nation, could be moving in a direction which many of us remember was the condition of communist Russia during the Cold War? People were afraid to speak. People were afraid to say what was on their minds. People were afraid to challenge the authorities. People were afraid to be critical of others. They were afraid to say anything which might get them into trouble with the law. So if, for example, you criticise Islam and you say that Islam can't save a person from their sin, then you might end up being hauled off to Scotland, to the courts in Scotland, and then put in prison for seven years. But the Bible is absolutely clear that Islam has never saved a single soul from hell and never delivered one person throughout the whole of history. (coughs) Because Jesus Christ, the Son of God, is the only Saviour. And therefore those who seek salvation in Islam have sought it in the wrong place and they cannot find God. And then there are those very sensible persons who are saying that a person can't change sex and saying that a man could never ever become a woman and that is biological reality and you can't get away from that. And you might find yourself hauled off to Scotland for saying that. You might find yourself in a Scottish prison for saying that a man cannot become a woman. That is impossible. So you're not even able to state biological truth. Now let me put that in context. J.K. Rowling, the author of the Harry Potter books, has challenged the Scottish police to arrest her for saying that a man cannot be a woman. And even Rishi Sunak, the English Prime Minister, has stood by her in that. But the law says that this is a hate crime and she should go to prison. And she has challenged the uh, Scottish government and the uh, Scottish police to put her in prison for saying that a man cannot become a woman. Well, I ask you, what do you believe? What do you think? Do you think a man can become a woman? Well, I know if I were to stop and talk to many people here, quite a lot of people would quite angrily say to me, of course a man can become a woman. But I tell you the truth, a man can never become a woman. A man can never be a woman. A man can never be a woman trapped in a man's body. A man is a man and a woman is a woman. God made us male and female in his image and that can't change. But you see, the hate crimes law passed in Scotland applies to England as well. You didn't know that. Anyone complaining about my speech here in Hales Owen today in Scotland could have me taken by the police to Scotland to be interrogated in Scotland and put in prison in Scotland for telling you in Hales Owen that a man could never be a woman. 
And I can tell you there's no hatred in my heart in saying that. Love rather because we must speak the truth. We must speak the truth to our children. We must speak the truth to our politicians. We must speak the truth to our generation. And the truth is that a man can never become a woman. We have this lie perpetrated in our schools that uh, little boys can become little girls. All you've got to do is chop some bits and pieces off, chop and change around, and that little boy has become a little girl. What foolish nonsense. Now who, I ask you, who is protecting these children from such monstrous wickedness as this? Telling little girls that they can be little boys and telling little boys that they can be little girls. How foolish that is. Yet yeah, our teaching profession, supposedly intelligent, our teaching profession is teaching this to little children. And parents are letting it happen. What foolishness, what madness, what sin, what corruption, what wickedness. And God sees it. And I remind you that Jesus said, whoever puts a stumbling block in the way of one of these little ones, it would be better for him to have a millstone hung around his neck and be cast into the midst of the sea. And that's a warning to the medical, not the, yeah, the medical profession as well, but to the teaching profession, that when they corrupt children by their actions, and there are those in Wales who have taken the Welsh government to court claiming that this is the grooming, the sexual grooming of children, that this is how sexual grooming takes place, the way things are being taught in schools now, those who corrupt children, God sees it, and God will arise, and God will avenge those children, and God will stand up for those people, those children, even if their parents don't defend them, but it may be too late for them. And so our children have been given over to madness. Our children have been given over to corruption. And, uh, you know, I'm even told that uh, the latest generation of teenagers, something like 30%, 30% identify as non-binary. You can't be non-binary. It doesn't exist. Oh, it exists in people's heads, but it doesn't exist in the real world. In reality, you cannot be non-binary. You are either male or female. And you cannot change that. Saying that you aren't doesn't change it. Forcing other people at gunpoint to say that doesn't change it. Now for all of these things, for all of these things, I could be hauled before the courts in Scotland for saying this in England. I could be hauled before the courts in Scotland and put in prison in Scotland. We well, just advert his facts. Just because you say you're a fucking lamppost. Does it make you a lamppost? Okay. If you say you're a car, you, yeah. you know, you mentioned transgenderism. You are what you are. Exactly. And but you if, can't change that. If I say, oh, I'm a fucking woman now. Okay, so your foul, la your foul language, now. your foul language is you sin before Almighty God. I'm That's here okay. to preach the gospel. I, I don't give a fuck. Uh, and you need, to, re you need to repent, that, you need to repent of your foul language. Well. You need like, to repent you of your foul language and turn from that foul language and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. You see, it's not just that we need to put away such madness. We need to put away our sins before Almighty God. And only the Lord Jesus Christ can take away our sins before Almighty God. He is the only one that can deliver us from the wrath to come. He is the only one who can take away our sin. He is the only one who can deliver us and have mercy upon us. What days we live in. <coughs> what times we are living in. Evil days, evil times, days of darkness here in England, in the West, because we have forgotten God. And it should be quite evident to us by now that neither our politicians, nor our police, nor our teachers, nor our doctors, nor our lawyers, nor anybody else can run the country without the gospel of Jesus Christ. Well, the question is, do you know Jesus Christ? Okay. Okay, but do you know Jesus Christ? Okay, have you repented of your sins? Okay, uh, who are you trusting? Who are you trusting to save you on the day of judgment? Okay, so 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 you're not trusting in your own works. You just said you're a good person. 
But you see, being a good person doesn't count with God. We're not good people. We are sinners before Almighty God. We are unworthy. We are under the wrath of God and we need a saviour. And Jesus is the only good person who has ever lived. Because only God is good and Jesus is God. Well, I'm a Baptist, but it doesn't make any difference. I'm a Christian and I know the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord Jesus is my saviour. Well, uh, the Bible says there's a way that seems right to a man, but the end thereof is death. If Jesus Christ is the only way of salvation and the people here don't know Jesus Christ, they cannot escape they cannot escape the fires of hell. But I'll tell you what, most of the people I come across in England today believe in nothing at all. They think they just believe that all life is about is pleasure, all life is about is partying or whatever it is, and uh, television and everything else, or sport or whatever, but they have no fear of God before their eyes. Now, if we die, there is none good, there is none righteous, no, not one. There's no good people out there, there's no good people here. There's not a single good person in Hell's Owen today. Did you know that? I know. That's what God says in the Bible. Excuse me, go up the hill, go up to the Life Central Church and go and have a chat with them and I'll tell you who's good people. If they don't preach according to this word, why are they not down here preaching this to people? Because they don't, you don't you have to go... Because they don't belong to the Lord. Because they don't preach the Gospel. Because they have forsaken the truth of God's word. Well, do you know that they're blessing sodomy in churches of England now? Did you know that? There are no good people in that church. There's not one. There is none righteous. No, not one. There, because the Bible tells me, because God tells me, there is none righteous. No, not one. They are all together become corrupt. We have to, sin corrupts us and we are all sinners. We have all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. There is none righteous, no, not one. So what you're telling me now is that you're not good, but they are? I'm not, I am a good person. They won't save you. No, it's none righteous. There is none good but God. Okay, we've all we've we've all had a hard life, but we are all sinners, and sin makes us bad, and we need a saviour in Jesus. Jesus is us, us the only saviour. Jesus was the only one who never sinned. Bless you, bless you. The Lord Jesus is the only one that never sinned. He is the only one that was good. He is the only one who is righteous. And he is the only one that can save us from our sins. The question that was raised really is, how many good people are in Hales Owen today? How many are good people are there? Well, the answer in the Bible is that there are no good people in Hale Zone today. Not one. The Bible says there is none righteous. No, not one. There is none that seeketh after God. They are all together become corrupt. And the Bible is telling us this for our own benefit, that we might have an accurate, faithful, truthful assessment of our own condition. And our own condition is that we are ru ruined and lost and under the condemnation and wrath of Almighty God because of our sins. Now I'm going to read a passage which is familiar to some people from the Bible, from the book of Revelation chapter 6. That passage tells us as follows, And I saw when the Lamb, that's Jesus Christ, opened one of the seals, and I heard as it were the noise of thunder, one of the four beasts saying, Come and see. And I saw, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat on him, and had a bow, and a crown was given unto him, and he went forth conquering and to conquer. And when he had opened the second seal, I heard the second beast say, Come and see. And there went out another horse that was red, and power was given to him that sat thereon to take peace from the earth, and they that, that they should kill one another, and there was given unto him a great sword. And when he had opened the third seal, I heard the third beast say, Come and see. And I beheld, and lo, a black horse. And he that sat on him had a pair of balances in his hand. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts say, A measure of wheat for a penny. And see thou hurt not the oil and the wine. Now that's a global famine that is to come, I believe. 
And then verse 7 here. And when he had opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth beast say, Come and see. And I looked, and behold, a pale horse. And his name that sat on him was death, and hell followed with him. And power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth to kill with sword and with hunger and with death and with the beasts of the earth. There are great wars coming. There are great famines coming. There are great pestilences coming which will make COVID look like a picnic in the park in comparison. And if what Revelation here tells us is true, and it is true, and I believe that with all my heart, when these things combine, the two billion people in this world will lose their lives. We read about death and hell following. God's judgments are abroad in all the earth. God hates sin and God is going to bring this generation to a timely end. God's judgments are coming. God's judgments are coming upon England and you can see that in our day. When the police can't control rioters in London who have swastikas, which are clearly references to the Holocaust, which is an abomination, which is a wickedness itself, and the police simply explain it away as just another thing, then we have no control on our streets. The police have lost it. And no wonder if the politicians have lost it. There is no fear of God before their eyes. And we're seeing the beginnings of God's judgments in our nation. The breakdown of law and order, the breakdown of society. And this is nothing compared to what's to come when these famines and these diseases, these pestilences, what Revelation chapter 6 calls death, comes upon the earth. And then we are told that death is followed by hell. In the book of Revelation we read this, that on the day of judgment books will be opened. And the book of life will be opened, and whosoever's name was not found in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. If you do not know the Lord Jesus Christ, then your name is not in the book of life. If you are not trusting in Jesus Christ alone for the forgiveness of your sins, then your name is not written in the book of life and you will be cast into the lake of fire according to this book, according to the Bible. That's why I must preach this gospel. The Bible says, how will they hear without a preacher? The lady that came past earlier was talking about, go up that hill to that church. But the gospel must be heard in the streets. It must be heard in the concourses, the voice of those who are appointed by God to preach Christ Jesus and him crucified, the saviour of the world, must be lifted up in the streets. You hardly hear it in the pulpits anymore. You hardly hear the word of God anywhere preached, but this word is able to make you wise unto salvation, which is through faith in Jesus Christ. Without Jesus Christ, you will be cast into hell. Without the Lord Jesus Christ, you cannot be saved. People come to me and they say, you're not saying that no Muslims are saved. Oh, look at those uh, lovely uh, Muslims. Surely God will save them. The answer is no. God makes no distinction. God is no respecter of persons. Islam will not save you. It cannot save you. It cannot deliver you from the wrath to come. It cannot give you everlasting life. It cannot take away your sins. It cannot reconcile you to Almighty God. Islam is a dead religion that saves no one, has never saved anyone. It is Jesus Christ alone who saves from sin. It is the blood of Jesus Christ alone shed on that cross of Calvary when he was crucified there and when he died there that takes away sin. So if we don't have Jesus Christ and the Muslims don't have Jesus Christ, then we do not have the salvation that comes from Almighty God. Without Jesus Christ, you cannot be saved. In Jesus Christ, your names are written in the book of life. Without him, your names are not written in the book of life. And I remind you again that Revelation says, whosoever's name was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. That's hell, fire and torment. Death and hell followed. Revelation chapter 6 says... It is appointed unto man once to die, and after death comes judgment. So it's not annihilation. It's not when you're dead, you're dead. It's not, oh, I hope they use my body for compost so I can push up tomatoes. 
So after death comes judgment. And the Bible teaches the Lord Jesus Christ taught very clearly indeed that there is a resurrection of the dead. A resurrection of the just and the unjust. A resurrection to everlasting life and a resurrection to everlasting torment in hell fire. So you see, one day you must stand before the judgment throne of Jesus Christ and he knows you. I don't know you. I know nothing about you except you're wearing a a slogan shirt, which I can't quite read from here. But, um, But Jesus knows everything about you and he is the coming judge. And he tells us that we're sinners and we need him. We need the Lord Jesus Christ to take away our sin. So it says living in Canada with British roots, so that's yeah. good. Okay, yeah. so Canada. I'm a Christian, uh, thank you, and I'm speaking this gospel. But do you know the Lord Jesus Christ? We're Christadelphians, yeah. yeah. Well, Christadelphian doesn't make you a Christian because you deny the deity of Jesus Christ. You say he's not God. If you say that he's not God, yes. then effectively you have the spirit of Antichrist according to the Bible. Not really. So you're not Christian. prove it just as well the other way. Well, you think you can prove it, but yeah. uh, but if you deny the Son, and you do deny the Son, then you are denying the Lord Jesus no, Christ in his Christ, Godhood. We acknowledge that God is the, the Father of Christ. Well... We have God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. We have a Holy Trinity very clearly three taught in the things. Scripture. Three totally different Three things. persons within one God. How many gods are there? One God. One God. So we have three persons within the Godhead. Mm. We have God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. So and Jesus was, Christ is God the Son. He went to the temple to learn. How is it that he answered the questions so wisely? Because he is the Son of God. Because he is the eternal God. Because he is the Word of God. Thank you for listening. Yeah, a lot of it is true. I've heard so many preachers on this street and I wouldn't listen to them, but for mm. the first time I've heard this man. Yeah. And he's yep. to the word and, of God. and good for him as well, he stands up and says, and, 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 and what so actually, I agree with everything this man says. I'm a Christian. Mm. Yeah. And I, I, I've been a Christian most of my life. And yeah. It's refreshing yeah. to hear you said this December man two. Yeah. say what he said. So he's not, he's not a con or anything, he's genuine. And yeah. the word of God has been preached. But that's good. Yeah, that's uh, good. And, and, and it's true, you know, a lot of people, you know, don't really, have never really accepted Christ. There's, there's all these Christ. people around okay. not even listening. I've got to keep Jesus. preaching, I can't stop preaching, so no, no. The, by all means continue talking, but uh, but no, no. there's just but one, just one consideration here. Now, okay, say, thank you for listening, thank sir. Thank you so much for what you say. Pray for this, man, and pray for the others who've yeah, heard yeah, it today, thank we, you. We need to pray for the world. We're in a of, very, co- of course, very of course, of course, of course. So in Hebrews chapter 1 we read, God who at sundry times, thank you very much, brother, God who at sundry times and in diverse manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets hath in these last days spoken to us by his son whom he hath appointed heir of all things by whom also he made the worlds who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person image yeah but you have to go to to the Greek Mm. what does it mean he is the express image of his person you cannot be the brightness of God's glory or the image of God too you cannot be the brightness of God's glory or the express image of his person, and upholding all things by the word of his power. That sounds like God to me. Um, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. Now, who is able to sit down at the right hand of the majesty on you high? Sit by the right hand of yourself. Well, the, these, are, these are all silly arguments. These are silly arguments. This is telling us that all the glory that belongs to God belongs to My Jesus Christ. Is than I. You cannot, yes, My he is said than that. I. Some, would, some would say that what that means is that when Jesus was on this earth in humility, God's Father's God, God the Father's situation in heaven was greater how than his he situation. He was God, how did he but die? Jesus, he di- he die is a more, God when, is a when more you more. die, you don't cease to exist. Your spirit doesn't cease to exist. It was the physical, the spirit, the spirit, it was the physical mortal body of Jesus Christ that died upon the cross, and then he descended into hell, so it, it, and then he was resurrected. If he was, if he was a mortal, he was. It was he was both God and man. Jesus Christ is both God and man. Now he, he's okay. at the right hand of the Father. Okay. So you can't sit right next to door, next door to yourself. Okay, so I have to and keep if preaching. If God, he would have been... I learning. have to keep preaching, but if... You're doing a good job. If you, like you don't know that Jesus Israel. Christ is God, you have the spirit of Antichrist. And, and yeah. those, those Christadelphians, okay. they're wrong. And the, 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 you, you, if you don't know who Jesus Christ is, if you've got the wrong Jesus, then you're damned you to hell. Everything right apart from the Trinity. And most religions do believe. Okay, in the Trinity. so I believe in the Holy Trinity that there is one God, but three persons within the Godhead: God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And Jesus Christ is God the Son, and that means that all of the glory, all of the glory that belongs to Almighty God, belongs to the Lord Jesus Christ. Let me read these verses concerning the Lord Jesus Christ. 
Christ in Hebrews chapter 1. God who at sundry times and in diverse manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son whom he hath appointed heir of all things by whom also he made the worlds who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power when he had by himself purged our sins sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high being made so much better than the angels as he hath by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they the Lord Jesus Christ being the son of God has to be God he is God. He is the eternal God. He is the eternal Son. All of the power, glory, majesty, holiness, and dominion that belongs to Almighty God belongs to the Lord Jesus Christ, because he is God. And he is the express, he is the brightness of the glory of God and the express image of his person. And you can never be the brightness of the glory of God or the express image of his person if you are not God. If you go to Revelation or to Ezekiel, for example, you read about extraordinary, powerful, mighty, immense, created angels that guard God's throne and glorify God. Now, those angels are very powerful and they're quite extraordinary. But those angels are nothing, are nothing compared to God himself. And Jesus Christ is God himself. He has a name that is so much better than the angels. And today the Lord Jesus Christ is seated at the right hand of God the Father on the very throne of heaven. And very, very soon the Lord Jesus Christ will return on the clouds of heaven. In the glory, in the majesty that belongs to Almighty God because he is God. And when the Lord Jesus returns on the clouds of heaven, he will fight against the inhabitants of this world with that sword that comes from his mouth. That sword is this book, the Bible. You say, I only tell, tell little white lies. Well, the Bible says, thou shalt not bear false witness. You say, well, I've never committed adultery, but Jesus said, whosoever looketh at a woman to lust after her in his heart has committed adultery with her in his heart. You say, I've never stolen anything, but you have a heart full of covetousness. That lottery ticket in your pocket tells me that you have a heart full of covetousness. Because all those things, all those things like gambling and so on, all of those things tell me that you don't love God and you don't know God and you don't trust God and you don't want God to reign over you. But Jesus Christ is the saviour of the world. And the people of England need to repent of their sins, put away false and fraudulent religion and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ in order to be saved. Incidentally, Christadelphianism is not Christianity. It's not Christian. It denies the deity of Jesus Christ. If you deny the deity of Jesus Christ, then you cannot be saved, because you don't have the Jesus of the Bible. There are many false Jesuses around. There are many false Gospels. We need to get back to this book, the Bible. We need to believe what God has said. We need to believe what God has done and that he loved this world and he sent and he gave his son, the Lord Jesus Christ. And the Lord Jesus is that one who will take away your sin. And the Lord Jesus is that one who will give you salvation and everlasting life and deliver you from the wrath to come and have mercy upon you. Turn from your sins. Repent of your sins. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Cast yourselves on the Lord Jesus Christ. He was crucified. He died in the place of sinners. He made a sacrifice for sin. He laid down his life for sinners like you and me. He loved sinners like you and me. And he gave himself for sinners like you and me. And the Lord Jesus Christ alone can take away your sin. And if you don't know Jesus, your name isn't in the book of life and you will be cast into the lake of fire. That's the message that the Archbishop of Canterbury should be thundering from the pulpits of this land. 
that if your name is not written in the book of life, you will be cast into the lake of fire, that there is a wrath to come, that there is a judgment to come, and we must flee from the wrath to come. And the only place that we can flee and the only person to whom we can flee is the Lord Jesus Christ. And he is the only one that can take away your sin. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, is the only one who can deliver you and have mercy upon you and save you from your sin. Now without the Lord Jesus Christ you cannot be saved. And without the Lord Jesus Christ you cannot be delivered from the wrath to come. His blood was shed, his body was broken in the place of sinners. And we are all sinners. There is none righteous, no, not one. There is none that seeketh after God. So turn from your sins, turn from your lies, turn from your foul language and your foul mouths, turn from your sexual immorality and your lusting and your pornography and your transgender ideology and your homosexuality and your lesbianism. Turn from your false religion, whatever it may be, whether it be Catholicism, or dead Anglicanism, or uh, or um, Islam, which won't ever save you from your sins and can never save you or anyone else from their sins. Turn and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Seek the Lord Jesus Christ. Find the Lord Jesus Christ. And you will find the life that comes from God. To believe in the Lord Jesus Christ is to know life from the dead and deliverance from the wrath to come. Without the Lord Jesus Christ, we cannot be saved. Turn from your sins and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Now I'm going to leave that there because I'm going to preach again shortly in another town. Father, I pray for the word of God that's been preached, that it would go into men's hearts. And I pray for that Christadelphian man that he would be convicted of the beauty, glory, power, majesty and deity of the Lord Jesus Christ. I pray for the woman who said that she was good and if I just walk up the hill to a church I'll find lots of good people. I pray that she would come under conviction of her own sin and that she would find mercy and find your salvation. Father have mercy upon this town of Halesone. Bless those who are doing evangelistic work here and save sinners from their sin. Father I pray that the name of the Lord Jesus Christ would be glorified in this place that your mercy would be found amongst the heathen here and the people would turn, repent and believe and live. Help me, Lord, as I continue to the next town, to Dudley, God willing to preach there. Father, use me for your glory and bless those who are preaching your word today in this house. can pray in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen.